This segment is brought to you courtesy of Caribbean American Weekly, a newspaper owned and operated by Caribbean Americans. Read the latest edition at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. To like us on Facebook, to advertise or to subscribe, visit us at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. To advertise with the Caribbean American Weekly Publication for freelance assignments to distribute at your business place, visit us at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. Or to meet a marketing representative at our office, Call 718-771-0988. That's 718-771-0988. Good day and a warm welcome to everyone. Today in the studio with us, we have a very special guest, Congresswoman Yvette Clark, representative for the 9th District in Brooklyn. So lovely to have you, Ms. Clark. How are you today? Wonderful. It's great to be with you, Ashley. How are you doing? I'm well. Thank you for asking. So as a representative with Jamaican Heritage, how do you believe the new Bob Marley movie, One Love, contributes to the global understanding and appreciation of Jamaican culture? Well, first of all, let me just say uh, this was a long time in coming. Uh, the the, the uh, story uh, of Bob Marley's uh, sort of global dominance with uh, exporting reggae music around the world it was a story that needed to be told. Um, I think that the impact that Bob Marley has had, uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers, uh, and Bob Marley as a, so, as, as a uh, social uh, commentary uh, is something that resonates with people who come from circumstances where they may have faced hardship, they may have faced war, but at the end of the day, he delivers on redemption and love. And I think that that's why uh, he became so prominent and remains a prominent figure uh, in uh, the, the annals of, of, of music, uh, not only reggae music, but music uh, from around the world. How is it? How important is it for younger generations, especially those of Caribbean descent, to have access to films like One Love that highlight the contributions of iconic figures like Bob Marley, especially when it relates to music and social issues? Yeah, I think that uh, it's very important. Uh, this is a legacy uh, that particularly those uh, who were born in the Caribbean or of Caribbean descent can derive um, great honor and dignity from, you know, the, 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 as a lyricist, um, as a musician, Bob Marley really captures, you know, the, uh, the, the, the travails, if you will, of, uh, those who have had to struggle for their liberation, those who have overcome adversity and a sort of spiritual, um, uplifting, uh, of those who, uh, you know, continue uh, to feel oppressed um, in, in whichever society they may reside in. And we know, as those of us who are part of the Caribbean diaspora, that, you know, w w we are uh, relegated to minority status in many of the nations uh, in which we reside, be that in Europe, be that in Canada, be that in the U.S., and um, it is important to be grounded in, uh, you know, a philosophical, in a spiritual, and in commentary that speaks to our lived experiences. And that uh, is, is uh, you know, in a, uh, in a way, uh, what Bob Marley's contributions mean uh, to those of us um, who, you know, generations later, this music still um, resonates with. 
Um, so given the movie's portrayal of Bob Marley's legacy in life, what are your thoughts on representation of Caribbean figures in international media and how can it be improved? Well, I unfortunately did not have the opportunity to actually see the movie as of yet. Uh, we had a conflict in time when we, we actually were voting here in the House of Representatives. It was certainly an honor for me to be at the reception uh, last evening where uh, people from across uh, D.C. Uh, came uh, to, to, to screen the new movie. And, and what I would say to that is that, uh, you know, bringing uh, a window into the life led by Bob Marley and his family, his musicians, uh, gives people a window into a time when, uh, while we've celebrated Bob Marley, uh, he was a Rastafarian. And he was a Rastafarian in a nation where that religion had not fully been embraced yet. And so he was sort of relegated to the margin of a society that he lived in. But his uh, spirit was one that couldn't be contained. Uh, it, it, it manifested itself through music and song in a way in which it not only brought prominence to himself, it brought prominence to Rastafarians, it brought prominence to the oppressed and the marginalized in societies where there were nonconformists, if you will. And I think for those of us who live in a society where there are you know, major pressures to conform. Uh, he 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 is served as a guiding light uh, to the fact that our talent, our skills and ability speak to who we are, our gifts that we are given, ultimately uh, add value to the societies in which we live. And I think that that uh, will 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 probably be most prominent in those uh, who have the uh, honor of actually viewing uh, his life story. And lastly, I want to ask, um, Bob Marley's music carries powerful messages of love, unity, and resistance. In today's context, how do you see his message resonating with issues we face, particularly in the realms of immigration and social justice? Well, you know, there's no doubt about it as far as I'm concerned that, um, it, it, we can all draw inspiration from the, the, the resilience, from the resistance, from the victories that uh, Bob Marley sang about in, in his catalog of music. And it, and, it, and it strengthens us, it grounds us in a way in which we, uh, those of us who are in the diaspora, those of us who are of African descent, um, can... Uh, pull from that music the, the power uh, to overcome the obstacles of discrimination, to overcome the, the obstacles of uh, bias and um, uh, relegation of our uh, communities in, into uh, circumstances that, that have led to, um, you know, the pushback on the Black immigrant experience. Um, I think that, that it should be a clarion call, quite frankly, to all of us as we see uh, sort of the backlash uh, to the migration stories of people of African descent uh, that are taking place right now. Um, people who are coming from continental Africa, people who are coming from the Western Hemisphere of African descent and are, are treated without uh, the, the dignity that they deserve. It, it, it should be a clarion call to those of us who have been fortunate enough to overcome the, that stigma, to fight for others, uh, to um, be able to embrace the American dream uh, with, without, uh, the, the, without the hindrance of those who would impose um, you know, their bigotry upon us um, and rise to the occasion of bringing our gifts to bear and helping to build a stronger, uh, more uh, diverse um, civil society. 
Thank you so much, Congresswoman Yvette Clark. I know we have to run, but thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. And as uh, Bob would say, one love. And as my mom would say, bless up and walk good. <laughs> and you too. This segment was brought to you courtesy of Caribbean American Weekly, a newspaper owned and operated by Caribbean Americans. Read the latest edition at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. To like us on Facebook, to advertise, or to subscribe, visit us at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. To advertise with the Caribbean American Weekly publication for freelance assignments to distribute at your business place, visit us at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. Or to meet a marketing representative at our office, call 718-771-0988. That's 718-771-0988.